Bad news for people who have Android phones with Snapdragon processors. There has been more than 400 vulnerable pieces of code found inside of the digital signal processing chip on the Snapdragon processors, some of which can be exploited by regular hackers to do things like turn your phone into a tool used for spying on you. And I mention regular hackers because, of course, the Alphabet Boys have been using phones to spy on us for a long time. In fact, they've been doing it since long before the smartphone. They've been doing it since phones that weren't even cordless. Uh, but anyway, this attack can work without any button presses, swipes, or interactions from the end user. And then data can be exfiltrated from your phone. Data like videos, photos, app information, location data, and even real-time microphone recordings. And it's also possible to use these vulnerabilities to perform things like a denial of service attack on a user's phone by basically making all their photos, videos, contact details, and applications unavailable. So of course that would effectively turn your phone into a useless brick for the duration of the attack. And this also serves as a vector to infect your phone with other malicious code that can completely mask its activities. Things like a hacked APK could just be used um, through this vector to upload it to your phone and then execute the app. And it makes that very difficult or impossible in some cases to remove it. And I think this information was first released by Checkpoint, by the way. Uh, so that's why I have their blog up. Uh, they also have links to a webinar down here that's going to be taking place tomorrow where they're going to give us some information about ways that we could potentially defend against these vulnerabilities. Uh, but since the majority of Android phones use Snapdragon processors, this is likely going to affect the majority of Android phones, although it's unclear exactly which models of the Snapdragon processor are affected by this. It may be like the Spectre bug that was found in Intel processors where only certain models were affected. I couldn't really find clear information about that. And I suspect that the fix to these vulnerabilities is going to be very difficult to implement since each of the different phone manufacturers in the Android world has different firmware running on their phones. Uh, even though these phones, they might be using the same processor, they're gonna have slightly different hardware underneath. And the code running on these Qualcomm DSP chips is proprietary, so the fix has to come from Qualcomm and then be implemented for each individual type of phone. And once you understand what the DSP chip does, then the complexity becomes a little bit more understandable. So the DSP chip is responsible for optimizing each area of use on the device itself, including the multimedia experience, video recording, artificial reality, if your phone supports it, uh, audio features, charging features such as quick charge and wireless charging, and much more. And each type of Android phone processes images in different ways with their camera. So you can look up comparisons, for example, of smartphone cameras or spec sheets of these cameras on GSM Arena. Uh, some of these phones, they have a feature like wireless charging and it's gonna be at different wattages. Some phones are going to be able to wirelessly charge faster than others. And some phones even have the ability to be used as a wireless charging pad themselves for other devices. Uh, this is a feature in the newer Samsung phones. They've actually, I think they've had this for a couple of generations now. Um, some phones, they have the capability to add storage to them via an SD card. So there's another feature that a lot of the flagship Samsung phones have. So it sounds to me like this is going to take a significant amount of work unless some type of one size fits all fix can be applied to patch this Qualcomm vulnerability. Uh, but like I just explained with what the DSP chip is responsible for, and since each phone has different hardware, I don't think that's gonna be super likely. Now, Qualcomm has apparently already issued a patch for the bug on their end to the processor itself, but it's still the responsibility of each smartphone manufacturer to integrate this patch 
into their specific handsets. And as we've seen with security updates in the past, certain manufacturers are probably going to drag their feet with implementing this fix. And undoubtedly for older phones that are starting to reach their end of life for technical support, the manufacturer isn't even going to implement a fix at all. They're just going to tell you to go buy a new one, you know, give them some more money, get the latest and greatest, uh, otherwise your phone might be able to get hacked. But I guess on the bright side, the silver lining to this is that um, the new Galaxy Note 20s that are being released with the Exynos chips, I believe they're being released everywhere in the world except for the US. The US is the only one that's supposed to be getting Snapdragon, but like Europe is getting the Exynos chips. So if you decide to buy the phone in that region, you are going to have a slightly underperforming processor. That's kind of the reason why a lot of people didn't like it since the Exynos chips aren't as fast as the Snapdragon ones, but at least you won't be vulnerable to these attacks with an Exynos chip.